I'm at your service, friend. Take a look at the merchandise and let me know what you think. What can I say? He's an old friend, one of the oldest. The Scorias have done more than anyone for this town. Without them, Whitestone would be a festering ditch. No one from the outside can understand what we've been through. With the gnomes and now the mayor. It's time for the people of Whitestone to forge their own destiny. He's nothing more than a bully and a tyrant. Burn the mayor and his selfish claims to Whitestone. You came back? I'd hope to the heavens, but... Well, it's hard to trust hope when you've lost everything. I have a proposition for you, if you're willing to take a risk to do what's best for the people of Apotir. Our family mine is all we have left, and Eswin wishes to take that from us as well. He knows, as I do, that Scoria Mine still bleeds the valuable ore, and he wants it. The reason is simple. Eswin is an outsider, yet he wishes to steal all that the people of Apotir have built, have slaved over. He has no right to this land. Don't you see? At heart, down deep beneath the finery and heavy pockets, he is a common criminal, a thug like his men. Go to the mine and recover a sample of Tyrenium and bring it back to me. Sounds like a simple task, doesn't it? You just wait. Take this ring. It is a Scoria family heirloom. It will help earn my cousin's trust. They guard the mine from bandits and mercenaries. It is across the trench near the empty old Motus headquarters. You'll find my cousins inside. They stay in the mine to defend it against Eswin's thugs. I'm reluctant to ask who you are. You see, we've had many visitors lately, and every one of them has meant us harm. I am Thelgood Scoria, and this is my mine. I remember them from the booming days, when we all worked together to bring up the Terenium. Now everyone but us has turned to the sword for work. This mine is ours, so long as the Terenium remains. Those are the terms of the deed. He can talk to Motus Mining Interests in Hollowlands if he wishes to dispute it. It's been in our family for two generations since the gnomes brought us down here to Apatir to build Odessa. We don't have much, but this mine is ours. A den of thieves and corruption, that's what the village has become. Travellers to the east, mercenaries prowling the streets, starving men in the mines. It's a disaster. Whitestone is not worth your time, friend. It'll bleed the life right out of you. This mine is Scoria owned and operated, and I'm not about to let some scraggly pit pony go as saying it. Besides, we've had to shut down operations on account of the beasties, not the ones outside. These are new. A few days ago in the stope, we struck something. What came out of that hole was nothing like I'd seen. Killed most of my men. Now we can't go down there, and neither can you. So turn around and start walking. You know Adath? Well, you look like the kind of person he'd drag into the middle of this. Desperate. Well, it's your choice. Have a go. I'm not going to bury you. You went to Scoria. I wasn't convinced anyone could survive the evils awakened there. But you've proved tougher than expected. Making the mine safe again is a task for another day. Right now we have a more dangerous challenge before us. It's time to kill the mayor of Whitestone. It's the only way. Once he's gone, I can take his place and help save Apotir for its people, not for a man who wishes to be king. I imagine he sits on his makeshift throne in the mayor's cottage. Go. End his reign before it truly begins. I know why you're here. You've come with but one intent. Please, don't take my head. I beg you. Of course, you have my word. My life is Whitestone's for as long as it takes. Just spare me. I would go to the cage gladly. Do it! Ha! Everyone in Whitestone believes me to be the snake. Yet it is he who has coiled himself into the seat of power. They have been warned. 
It is time for the healing to begin. Eswin's men are mine now, and I will use them to shape a new era, one of rebirth. Your sacrifice has been great, and I will reward you for it. Take this gold and this armor, owned by my family for many generations. Be on your guard. Apotir is still a deadly place. Healing will take time, but time we have. I never wanted a conflict with anyone. My life has been about overcoming obstacles, not looking for them. Ezrin came here on the hunt for trouble. You there. The arena needs another competitor to round out the next match. The tournament can't go on until we have a leader for the Crows. If you trust in your fighting skills, there are vast riches to be won here at Valor Arena. It pulls in a lot of revenue for the arena and doubles as a tavern. It's a testament. A testament to mortal fortitude and ambition. It was originally Fey, but it passed to us through their own silly rites when Throth Magnus defeated their champion. I manage the fighters here at Valor Arena, and for the most part I make the matches. Best job in the world, far as I'm concerned. All the fans of the arena would kill for a chance to put their dream matches together. I do it every day. The Crows are always a massive allure for business. The champion doesn't want the tournament to go on until we find a leader for them. Well, as I said, the arena needs another fighter to start the next match. What do you say? You look like you could hold your own in a fight. That's the spirit. I hereby induct you into Valor Arena as the leader of the Crows. Your first opponents will be Remus Bloodhawk and his Marauders. Your team's already waiting for you in the Gladiator Pit. Head down the walkway when you're ready. There has always been a team of crows at Valor Arena. It was a tradition begun by Hroth Magnus, the first champion. A gladiator becomes a crow if she ever finds herself the sole survivor on her team. Hroth took this to mean that the fighter could have done more to help his companions. To him, these fighters were disgraced, and if they wanted to continue fighting, they did so as crows. Today we use the crows to draw a crowd, but the handicap remains. The Crows are only allowed two gladiators in the arena at a time, and as team leader you have to fight every match. Head down into the pit when you're ready to begin. You'll pick a partner to enter the arena with you. Hello, newcomer. I'm the leader of the Varani Marauders. I suppose we'll be doing battle soon. Do you have any next of kin? I was thinking I would let them know if anything were to happen to you out there. Only one team is coming back and it's going to be us. This place is a warrior's institution. Even a war sworn would hesitate to fight to the death just for the sake of it. We do it gladly and with passion. It's been years now since I first climbed those arena stairs. I look forward to doing battle with your team. Vigor's been doing this almost as long as I have. He'll do your team no wrong. He and I are among the few who've been here since the first Magnus's time. There's a lot you could learn from him. But I'm getting ahead of myself. You'll have to defeat us first. So you're the new leader. You should brace yourself if you haven't already. Fights in Valor Arena are to the death. I look forward to seeing what you can do. Let us know when you're ready. You'll have to decide which of the three of us will fight with you before a match. He's green as the grass in Dalintarth, but a good lad. I don't know if he's foolhardy or brave to think he'll make it far in this tournament. She's an alcoholic and a fiend, but she'll match any fighter. And few mages keep as cool ahead as she does in a fight. Few mages stay as drunk as she does during a fight, too. She says she requires alcohol to use her abilities. But I've never met a mage like that. I'd tell her she's a liar to her face, but I don't relish the idea of getting set on fire. The Fey held rights here, I think. I know they came in flocks to watch and participate like we do. Legend has it that every tournament they held ended in the same way, with the same champion defeating everyone. He was a gruff man, powerful, and an absolute beast in the arena. I've seen him pander Lian Shi into pulp with his bare hands. Outside of battle, however, he fancied himself a man of principle. Charged spectators just enough to keep this place running. It was the fight he wanted, not coin. He's a fierce fighter, 
but he sees himself as a moneymaker first and a competitor second. He's turned the arena into a spectacle. He paid for workers to haul his lavish house onto the arena grounds. He could have used that money to commission a small army or feed a small town for years. It's utter waste, and I'm not sure his father would have approved. The matches you'll fight here are to the death, with no quarter, no mercy. It's been this way since the first Magnus won the arena from the Fey. Even with his son turning this battleground into a ridiculous display, with the banners, the announcer, the bouts, at least, remain the same. Nice of you to ask. The younger fighters don't care about us weathered guys. I've been participating in arena matches for years. Got my start when Magnus put out a call for fresh gladiators, and the old man trained me himself. He'd have hated to see this. The spectacle of it all, I mean. In his day, the only thing that mattered was the fight. The rush of delivering the death blow. Let one of us know when you're ready. You will have to decide which of the three of us will fight with you before a match. Very well. Lead the way. I haven't seen anyone fight like you since Magnus. The first, I mean. We were lucky to have you out there. Only two crows are allowed to fight at a time against the entirety of the enemy team. It's doubly tough for you. Arena leaders participate in every match their team enters. We're called the Crows because we survived when the rest of our teams died in battle. With that handicap, you won't find many gamblers betting on us. I couldn't believe my eyes out there. You ripped those men to shreds! Where'd you learn to fight like that? Prison? I haven't been here long myself. I've always wanted to rough it as a war sworn. Joined up here to develop a bit of a spine. She's a terrifying woman, but a good ally to have on your side. Valor Arena? It's a place dreams are made of. If you dream of people getting stabbed or beheaded, or burned, very badly burned. The greatest gladiator this place has ever seen. Everyone here hopes for a career like his. Even the current champion pales in comparison. No one's even come close to lasting as long, not to mention performing as well. A gladiator becomes a crow when he finds himself the last surviving member on his team. It's a way to keep the tournament moving as teams start losing members. The rule has its roots in a tradition started by the current champion's father. But today it's basically an attempt to draw interest from the fans. Of course, it's not good news for us. The two-man rule means we're at a significant handicap. He's ancient. I'm surprised he can walk around in that armor, let alone fight in it. But he's reliable. That was not a bad first match. We should grab a drink sometime. I need to replenish my store before the next fight. The store being my stomach, that is. <laughs> He's your typical beginner, as far as I can tell. Good with the dagger and not much else. It's like a second home. Oh, I don't bet. But it's the only place on the grounds one can find a proper drink. Adrian gives me a free drink for every ten that I buy. I think he likes me. Before I got my start here, I'd been studying at the Scolia Arcana. I was quite good at affecting arcane explosions, but I found myself uniquely blocked. I realised I had to be less than sober to effectively cast spells, so I drank. They kicked me out for excessive abuse of drink, called me dangerous and a degenerate. I couldn't help it if alcohol gave me a certain clarity. No one in the arena gives me guff about it, and if they do, they stop as soon as I set them on fire. He's the team veteran. Been around longer than both Asa and me. We don't see eye to eye on everything, but he's a reliable choice in the arena. All I know is that the Fey built this place centuries ago, and Hroth Magnus took it from them. Amalur's better for it, as far as I'm concerned. 
A fighter is forced to join the Crows if they are the last surviving member of their team after a match. It's a long-standing tradition that keeps the tournament going as gladiators inevitably fall. Why would we keep fighting them? Well, we have our pride, and I wouldn't have signed up for this if I didn't think I could win it in the end. I watched his last match the day I joined the arena. He was one of the most impressive brute force fighters I have ever seen. Until his son managed to land the killing stroke, his father tossed him about the place like a rag doll. It was odd. Sure, he was old, but in his final moments I thought he looked ill. This is the House of Valor. You won't find another place in Amalur quite like this. Nothing is sacred here. Your competition is out to maul you and the management likes it that way. Especially the champion, nasty man. If Valor weren't the only arena on the continent, I'd have taken off a long time ago. I'll admit I didn't expect you to come back. There's a reason no one was signing up. Remus is as experienced as they come. Here's your money for the match. Oh, and one more thing, Gladiator. Jokul Fangard mentioned he would like to speak to you in the gambling den. He's in the gambling den in the market. It's the only other building besides Champion's Manor. You can't miss it. Jokul is one of the most prolific gamblers in the den. I heard he practically lives off his winnings, and he lives well. He's been known to sponsor the fledgling gladiator here and there, and I think it would be wise to give him your attention. Hey there. Do you have any weapons that need maintaining? I'll get it done cheap, and I'll get it done well. Not much there for me, but I've heard the gamblers think I have a profound effect on the outcome of matches. If a gladiator has the gold to afford my repairs, I may bet his way. Now, Valor gamblers aren't known for their intelligence, but that seems pretty smart. I challenge you to find a better blacksmith in the region. The pieces Thora sells are adequate, I suppose. But if you ever buy anything from her, you best let me reinforce it before you go into battle. Magnus knew a good find when he saw one. Paid for my daughter and myself to come from Dalantarth to maintain his gladiator's equipment. It's where I make my living, so I can't help but think fondly of it. And my daughter loves it here. It gave me a job when Magnus realized having the best blacksmith in the land on hand would let him make money off of the competitors, too. She sells armor on Valor grounds. It's adequate equipment, but her pieces don't compare to my handiwork. Well, hello there. Are you suffering from anything, warrior? Festering wound? Magical burns? Good old-fashioned sword stabbing? I've got a poultice for that. A pleasure. Aches and pains, ringing in the ears. Anything you can't sleep off, I've got a potion for. I don't have much use for the den. It attracts all manner of riffraff. None of whom have much need for poultices. A fate weaver named Franz Engelhardt has made the den his home. However, I hear he makes good gold off the gladiators and gamblers. It's a veritable gold mine. The fighters here are most appreciative of salves and poultices. They pay me an arm and a leg to make sure they keep their arms and legs. Hey there, stranger. You look like you've seen some combat. Care to take a look at the highest quality armor this side of Detir? Unless gambling's an interest of yours, I'm afraid you won't find much there. Some brave gamblers make a living out of the den. Our resident fate weaver, Franz Engelhart, makes his perch there. It seems like only the gamblers and gladiators have found a use for him, though. Hacken's the blacksmith here. I wouldn't recommend him for repairs when you could just buy better equipment straight from me. Look, Apulos over there would have you believe he can fix any suit of armor better than it was when you bought it. I'm telling you, unless you're wearing to Arthur Prismir you stole off the war front, you're going to want one of my pieces instead. I have not found a better place in Detir to sell my pieces. The customers truly appreciate my work. Understandable, considering the life expectancy of a gladiator. It's like fighting a war in that arena. They say he's an excellent sagecrafter, 
But why would you need sage crafting when you can buy the finest armor ever made? From me, of course. Welcome. Any socketed gems I can remove for you? He goes by the name of Franz. Franz Engelhart. I'm as distrustful of him as I am of all of those in his profession. Fate weavers do little good for society. But of course gamblers are just the type of people to throw their money at them. You'll not find me there. Its patrons are too unruly for my liking. And a fate weaver makes his living there as well. All the more reason to avoid it. There isn't a better place in all of Detir to make a living. Can you imagine the work it must take to make a mine profitable? At Valor Arena, if you're good with a blade, can cast a little magic or have some coin to begin with, you're off to a good start. I'm the best sage crafter you'll find in these parts. With the arena dominated by physical fighting, you'd be surprised how far a little magic will take you. Franz Engelhardt, Fate Weaver extraordinaire at your service. I, uh, well, this, this is most unusual. I cannot glimpse your fate. I look at you and all I see is a void. I spend my days here dispensing fortunes to the gladiators and gamblers, for a hefty price, of course. Not all of them trust in my abilities, but those who do pay handsomely for my services. Whether their fate is favorable to them is beyond my concern. You'll find all manner of fans and gamblers here, all of whom I can turn into gold in my pocket on a good day. Valor Arena has been kind to this fate weaver, given me a steady source of income by way of gladiators and gamblers. You'll be surprised how often they try to take the frustrations with destiny out on me. Over time, I've learned to defend myself. Don't worry. I don't plan to take too much of your time. Just want you to know that I hope you'll keep fighting. The way you dealt with those fools in there, I think you could truly make an impact here at the arena, should you choose to continue. At any rate, take these. They'll serve you well. Think of them as a donation from a concerned fan, in hopes that you'll remain in the arena's employ a little longer. Dreams are made in this place, Gladiator. Rarely can one be rewarded so handsomely for an educated guess. Whether it's putting your money or your life on the line, Valor Arena allows people to live on the edge. In this place, you can win or lose everything, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just a fan. <laughs> a fan who makes a mother load off these guys. Valor practically pays my bills. Jaken will continue to deliver my gifts to you, as long as you continue to win matches. You're not just fighting for yourself out there, you see. All right, so you did pretty well last time. Don't get cocky. It's all uphill from here. Are you ready for another match? You're up against Bodine Borg and his team of magic users. He's a well-trained sorcerer and a researcher of the arcane, but no one's entirely sure why he joined the tournament. He's not a regular gladiator. And what's more, he's made an agreement with the champion to keep the bodies of those he defeats. The fight board's there for any gladiator with the courage to take on monsters from the arena's pen. You'll find all manner of exhibition matches listed on it. The gamblers particularly enjoy betting on those contests. You can never quite know who will win. Good. Join your team downstairs and choose a partner when you're ready. By the way, the champions made an agreement with the other team's leader. In return for fighting, the majors will get your bodies if they can kill you. I hope you know how to deal with spellcasters. You're up against a couple of mages from Detir, here for research, they say. They don't seem to be the most experienced fighters, but they're confident their mystic arts will win them this tournament. Yes, yes. What do you want? I'm readying my team for our next match. My associates and I aim to win this tournament, so we can survey the arena at our leisure. Ah. Jakin told you about my little arrangement with the champion? I'm always looking for fresh cadavers for my research. They can be notoriously difficult to come by, and since the defeated won't be using their bodies anyway, well, I don't see the harm in it. 
It's too bad the mortal races have turned it into an abomination in sight and sound. It's difficult to imagine a fey mind space through all this noise. My research and theory on fey regeneration will make me famous in the arcane communities of Amalur. My team and I have been all over Alsarund, studying the fey. We've scrutinized every inch of every ruin and hollow. This arena is the only place we've yet to survey. They're fascinating creatures, as unerring in their ways as the sun and the seasons. But their magic is what I'm interested in. Their arcane abilities are supremely powerful, and if my associates and I succeed, their abilities will be ours. I have to prepare for those mages. Ale to drink. Let me know if you need me in the next fight. I'll be right out. Just gonna finish my drink. What do you want to know? Have you ever fought a mage before? If you let them stay at range, they'll pulverize you. Interrupt their spellcasting if you can, and keep on them until they don't get up. You did good. Most people run or piss themselves in the face of having to fight a mage who knows you're coming ahead of time, let alone three. I'm glad you didn't do either. Speaking of which, I need to take a leak. I've been prepping since I woke up. Drinking since I woke up. So you're good at manhandling magicians as well. Good. Let's see how long you can keep this up. Here's your money. You deserve every coin. And Joke will ask me to pass these along. Let me know when you're ready for the next match. You're up against Brogan Adair and the Wolf Pack. And so is Brogan Adair and his team of rogues. Head down to the pit and we'll get this started. So, you're the upstart who's been doing so well lately. I hear you appeared out of the blue. You look upon the visage of your killer. You're lucky we meet in the arena instead of a battlefield. In the time it took you to walk this way, I'd have made you into a pincushion. For a dog of war, it's paradise. And I'm a dog of war. A battlefront is never far away in Amalur, but none of them offers as much gold. Our next opponents are highly trained. You take this lightly, and you might not make it back. I'll meet you out there. Force them to fight up close and you've won. Hard to notch an arrow when your opponent is breathing down your neck. We've come to really rely on you out there. Keep it up. Looks like you're starting to make an impression. The fans have been asking me about you. Heard a rumor your fights are moving a lot of money in the betting scene. None of the gamblers expected you'd last. Except Jokul, perhaps. He left me these to give you. Oh, and this is exciting. The champ mentioned he wanted to see you. Good. You're here. Welcome. I'm your grand champion. You're doing well. The fans love you. I love you. You're making this arena a lot of money. But you put me in a bit of a fix. There have been some fairly well-to-do people betting against your success in the gambling den. Now, some very important clients of mine are staring down a mountain of debt, and I want you to help us fix this. My father was the mortal champion who took the arena from the Fae all those years ago. The arena's been in the family ever since, and we've made it the jewel of Detia. Or rather, I have. I generate more revenue from this operation in a month than a ruffian like you makes in a year. He was the first mortal champion of valor. I defeated him in battle for the title. If it were up to me, I would have spared the old man's life. But valor fights are to the death, and I dare say the arena has become a better place under my leadership. Looking to glean some information about your competition? There isn't much to tell. I'm a rich man, but simple, and I've worked hard for it. My father was the champion until I killed him for the title. Regrettable, but look at what I've built from the ashes of his arena. I want you to fight a match alone. 
Advertising that handicap will generate bets against your success. You'll win, of course, and I'll win my money back. Make no mistake, it'll be an easy match. I'll make sure of that. I just need you to tell Jakin you'll agree to the match. You do this for me, and I'll pay you double for the fight, and bring you onto my team. No more scrapping with Vigor and his goons. Good. Then we have a deal. I've arranged a special match for you against Mad Dog and his mad men. Head down to the pit now. I'll send word for the match to be made. You won't regret this. Indeed we are. You should head back up to Jakin. You have a match coming up. Hail, warrior. He says he wants you to fight alone in the next match, right? Ha. <laughs> Magnus wants you dead. What did he offer you? Money? A spot on the Lords of Valor? Both? <laughs> there hasn't been a change to the Lords of Valor lineup since he brought them in. He lulls some green gladiator to accept a match with promises of money, then books the fool against a superior opponent. Usually the newcomer dies. Not everyone up in the stands hears about it. Not even Jaken, nor most gladiators. But the gambling rats sure do. He uses some of us to make his bets for him. Not like any of us can do anything about it if we want to remain. It's just a ruse. He wants you dead. With the way you fight, he figures he needs every advantage he can get. I'd wager he's going to bet against you. Again. Gladiator, you're just in time. Your next match just came in and you're fighting alone. He's a stone-cold veteran named Mad Dog and his madmen. They like to get up close and personal with their attacks, so get ready for a physical fight. Yes, you're fighting individually against Mad Dog and the Mad Men. It'll be tough to fight without your teammates, but you've pulled yourself out of rough situations before. Head down to the pit when you're ready. Good luck again, warrior. I hope you know what you're doing. You're dead, you understand? Dead! I'm going to gut you and choke you to death with your own giblets. There isn't a better place to fight, if it's a fight you're looking for. All manner of man and beast are ready to sate your blood first. I don't speak to my enemies. I destroy them. You're either crazy or stupid to fight an entire team. And the madmen are the best of them all. As far as I'm concerned, the only deal you've made is one where I get to stab you in the face. I'd be surprised if anyone was betting against you at this point. You just chewed up three veterans like so much cud. Here's your share of the fight money. The champ sends his regards along with the coin. He says he wants to see you again. I think he likes you. Also, Jokel sent these greaves your way. I guess he's been right with you since the beginning. That match certainly did not end like I had intended it to. I'll admit that I underestimated your abilities. I had intended for you to die in there. Of course. Underhandedness is what the arena is all about. I'm surprised you walked so willingly into so obvious a trap. Or did you? Then you know to trust no one. Especially not that pustule Jokel. I hope there's no bad blood between us after this. No harm, no foul, yes? You've deepened the debt of my friends, but perhaps you've assuaged their anger with your magnificent performance. Now get out of my house. It's time for my tea. Your next opponents are Holden Lafayette and the Vipers, a team with eclectic strengths. Holden's team has fighters from almost every discipline of combat. Expect both ranged and up-close fighters. Are you ready for the match? Good. Head on down. Stock up on supplies or equipment in the market if you need to. It only gets tougher from here. Good luck. Your opponents are the Vipers, a team with fighters trained from many disciplines. Be prepared to face archers, blade masters, and magic. You can head down to the pit when you're ready to begin. Holden Lafayette, at your service. The champion says you're a vicious fighter. I expected you'd be taller. You must have the champ worried. He paid my team twice the going rate to accept this match. They say you're unbeatable. We'll see about that. 
Look, I'd rather we not get overly familiar, seeing as I'm about to cut your legs off and feed them to you. No offense. You seem likable enough. Have you ever fought a war that never ended? Valor Arena is very nearly that. Every day brings a new fight, and the previous day, along with the fallen gladiators, are all but forgotten. It may sound like boasting, but we are the best team in the arena. We didn't come this far to lose to you. The Vipers aren't strong at any one thing. Instead, their leader assembled fighters of different disciplines to work together. Being a gladiator is absolutely horrific stuff it is. But I've got the perfect plan to desensitize myself. I'll fight in the arena until the nausea goes away. The champ's probably glad we're matched with Holden. The Vipers were the favorite to win in the early rounds. Alright, let's do this! Mastering my dagger work, living between bounties and braving life and death. Killing people. It all sounded like a dream to me. Until I tried it. They lack a specialty. Just a bunch of fighters from different disciplines. Vigor seems to think they'll be a tough fight. Tougher than usual, I mean. Hey, ease off the grim look, okay? I'm not the one who let those sorceries into the fight. They came in with a contingent of the Valor Guards. Don't know what's harder to believe. That you just won two back-to-back -back matches, or that the champion had jeopardized the arena's integrity just so you'd lose. Who knows how many bets the gambling den has to throw out after that interruption? What a mess! What in blazes is Magnus thinking? Sure, sure, here it is. And Jokul left you these. You got a moment before your next match? Take a rest. It won't be for a moment yet. Magnus was hoping you could meet him behind the stairs in the market. He, uh, stressed that it is imperative you be there. The champion's not here, gladiator. And if his plan worked, your friends are in a worse condition than you're about to be. He should be forcing them into the arena at Spearpoint as we speak. I... well, you might have a point there. I've seen you kill a small army's worth of people since this tournament began. I'll risk Magnus's ire. I doubt the champion will last long with you as an opponent, anyhow. Gladiator, where have you been? The champion has your entire team down in the arena. He's forced them into a match, and he's got trolls in there with him. I had someone steal a look at Agni's books. Guess who just dropped a wager against the Crows to the tune of 100,000 gold pieces? Your friend and mine, Tyr Magnus. While you were out gallivanting, Magnus went down into the pit with a squad of guards and forced your team to enter the arena. I hope so. You're not going to have a team at all in the next couple of minutes. Where have you been, Gladiator? Your team's next match has already begun! The champ forced your team into the arena so quickly that we didn't even have time to get an audience. Hurry! The crows are fighting for their lives down in the arena. The champion's thrown them in there with several trolls. Well, hello there. This is as far as you go. You've caused a lot of trouble for Magnus, friend. Force us! You're out of your league, gladiator. You should never have come back to the arena. Prepare yourself! Much obliged for the rescue, warrior. I knew the champion would try something, especially this close to the final match of the tournament. Luckily for us, you always seem to be there to foil him. If it weren't for you, this old man would probably be dead. <laughs> he told me he came here to make a name for himself and get some combat experience before joining the Warsworn. He's hardly ready for that. You handle yourself pretty well out there, but I noticed you flinch when struck like it causes pain. I thought you were tougher than that. You should try some deter ale. You'll lose feeling in your face with the first mouthful. Drink some more and nothing hurts. Nothing will ever hurt you again. Magnus threw everything but the sun and the moon at you, and you still made it through. You've amazed and delighted us once again. No team of crows has ever come close to your success. Here's your share of the prize, gladiator. You've done it! You're in the final match! Make your preparations! This is it, gladiator. You win this one, and the crows become tournament champions. Head down to the pit when you're ready. Are you ready for this? 
Winning this match will make us tournament champions. It won't be easy. The Lords are the best trained team we'll ever face. It's all been for this moment, Gladiator. Don't falter now. He's paid good money for some of the best fighters in Amalur to help him with this next match. We'll be facing combatants from every discipline of battle, from warriors to sorcerers. They all the stars in the sky, warrior. Why are you so impossible to kill? I can't remember the last time a gladiator became such a thorn in my side. They all bend to my will eventually, or die. But you, you remain ever so persistent. Before my friends flay the skin from your bones, is there anything you want to say? Plead? Beg for your life? Yeah, yeah. All in good time. Why rush to your end when you've spent all this time scrambling to escape the jowls of death? Think of us as your executioners. My team is the best paid, best trained and best armed in all of the arena. I don't know how you managed to get past them, but if they're still walking, I'll make sure that's rectified soon. And the same goes for you. You won't take it from me. You won't! Valor Arena is more than a battleground. It's a family estate. Do you hear me? The House of Valor is not yours to win. The leader of the winning team in this next match is crowned Champion of Valor. I've retained the championship for nine tournaments straight. What chance do you think you could possibly have? You did it, Gladiator! The champion threw everything at you and you bore it all with a grin. At least I think that's what that was. Jokel had this great sword to give you as a final reward. He also mentioned he wanted to speak to you about managing the arena. And finally, here's the key to the champion's manor. Take a rest, sit for a spell in the den. I'm sure that when you return you'll find a new challenger waiting for you. As champion, the gambling den and the arena are yours. You should speak to Jokel. He wanted to make arrangements with you to manage all of this. Hello. You don't know me, but I've been following you. My name's Thrindy. That parchment you carry, it belongs to me, as Steg always meant it to be a wedding gift. Now, if you please, hand it over. You heard it right. There's no love loss between the families of Darkvari and Zungar. But show me a close family in Apatir, and I'll show you a gnome with a conscience. What about him? I've met hundreds of men more to my liking. Only, those men didn't have what Steg possesses. The Dark Vari map. Once I learned Steg had it, I knew I had to act. I was willing to do anything. Even married the idiot. That's right. The fabled treasure map of the Dark Vari family. With it, I can build a new life, shed my Zungar name, and start all over again. Don't ever speak my name aloud. I hate hearing it. Zungar. It's the sound of retching. A man's skull cracking beneath a blow. Every time I hear it, I cringe. Soon I will have a new name to go with my new life. Perhaps I did, but he won't be able to care for me. He can hardly care for himself. Look how easily he was captured. No, oh, but perhaps you're right. He doesn't deserve this, not from me. There are few gentle souls left in Apatir. I'd hate to kill the last. I'll face the world alone, then. You haven't laid eyes on Rindy, have you? She is bright, graceful, like an oasis on a summer's day. I was sure she would be here. She said the stars themselves wouldn't wait as long as she would. You mean Bone Town? Not my favorite place in the world, if you couldn't tell. If the heat doesn't kill you, the guards might. They're not as bad as some think but worse than you'd imagine. I have the scars to prove it, unfortunately. What do you mean she's gone? Was her fear too great? Did she choose to stay behind? I had a feeling this would happen. In the end, I couldn't make her happy. That is a lie. You didn't know her as I did. You are a stranger in Apatir. You can keep the parchment. It is a map drafted by my grandfather. 
It reveals the locations of all Dark Vari hordes and Apatir. I don't want it. Not anymore. What good is wealth if the one you meant to share it with is gone? What good is anything? Hold right there, newcomer. I welcome you to Edessa, but before you enter, I must catalogue your visit. Please answer the questions as truthfully as possible. It's imperative that our tallies be accurate. Now, what brings you to Edessa? Excuse my rudeness. I am Senar Bruges, Talier second class to the Domus Politica. My purpose is to sort those that come to Edessa, to welcome them to the city while maintaining the delicate balance we gnomes have achieved. They help sort the newly arrived in the city. We want to ensure that everyone is placed where they properly belong. Yes, well, at least you look more put together than some of the people that came here before you. Poor sods. With any luck, your errands go without incident. Now, where have you come to Edessa from? F f for Morris Hughes? You mean to say you've come from Alistar? Yes, I, I see it now. They were wrong about your nose, but you match the description of the one I was to look out for. We can dispense with the remainder of my questions. You are free to enter Edessa. Sandstone Villa will serve as your lodgings. Temporarily. This is rare, newcomer. Very rare. If I can speak frankly, I'm not sure this is the blessing you take it to be. True, you have been saved from the squalid lodgings of the Hospitalis Quarters. But Sandstone Villa is reserved for... Uh, well, it is not my place to speak of it. This key will provide you with access to the villa. You would do well to be very aware of your surroundings, stranger. Now, good day. Yes, you are now officially recorded as having entered Edessa, center of all gnomish society in the Feylands. The Domus Politica has me tallying and sorting all new arrivals to the city. Another few years and I could be tallier, first class. The Domus is where all of Edessa's political work is done. The Templars determine the policy, and it is there that we enact it. And not everyone is given a villa just for arriving here. But I'd be careful. A gifted necklace can easily be a golden chain. I'm sure you'll learn about the city the more time you spend in it. It is vast, but well designed. So, you're the one that's come from Alistar. I've waited more than a while for you to show up. I'm Bruton, the Canis Bruton of the Praetorians. I've been stationed here for your protection. This city, our leadership, the Templars, don't see eye to eye. They have separate allegiances and conflicting motives, and it seems like you're in the middle of them. I'm Decanus of the Praetorians. I've been ordered to keep you safe within the city, which would admittedly be easier without someone breathing down your neck. In Edessa, wars are fought with papers and politics, and if you're being watched, that means somewhere, someone wants something. Quit the palace for an outsider. No offence. But this gilded collar of yours has a long chain. If I were you, I'd find out where it leads, before it becomes a noose. Gnomes don't have kings or mayors or theocrats. There's a caste whose sole duty it is to lead the rest of us. Though it can lead to turmoil, sometimes. I won't lie to you, long legs. You being housed here is because someone wants to keep an eye on you. I don't even know who it is. But I can tell you one thing. A gnome who keeps secrets in this city isn't up to anything good. Better to track them down before you or anyone else gets hurt. Luckily, looks like I'm not the only one that noticed your arrival. Got some letters here from the other concerned parties. Could be some leads. The Canis ain't my name. It's my rank among the city's Praetorians. And it's what's keeping you safe. My orders come from high, that's all I know. You ask me, only a Templar is the kind of pull to set you up here. Good luck trying to learn any more than that. If a Templar wants to remain anonymous, they have the influences to pull it off. Because someone important enough in this city said you needed it. You're being watched. Either you charm someone high up or you piss them off. Either way, they don't want you on your own. Hey, and here they are. Talking with any of their authors should get you in the right direction. 
I won't lie to you. I'm sticking my neck out here, helping you the way I have. But I won't stand to let any one gnome ruin the greater good of my people. Need anything else, talk to my Lou. He's been stationed as your retainer while you stay in the villa. Who should I know? It was a Dresden sign. I just checked for poison and all that. Just track down whoever wrote them. You do know how to read, right? That might be useful. Greetings, Master. I am Milo. I am here to manage the household affairs of Sandstone Villa, should you have any need of my services. The city is yours to explore, should you wish. The amount of freedom you are allowed is not normally granted to outsiders. As preparation for managing this household, I attended some of the humoral and physiological dissertations of Vian Severus. He's quite the healer. And now, so am I. I am a servant and the manager of Sandstone Villa. I also have some knowledge of the medical arts, should you require them. 